With GPS and its associated RNAV approaches, many smaller airports that don't have ground-based instrument approaches like ILS or VOR can be accessed in IFR conditions. Approach plates for RNAVs published by the FAA can lead us to think that their standard cookie-cutter look and feel mean most approaches are generally the same. Many RNAV approaches, though, especially ones without vertical guidance, carry far more risks than others. Unfortunately, there are no blaring alarm bells on approach plates for such riskier approaches. We have to look at the subtle hints on the plate that the approach we're flying may push our abilities. Let's look at some of those hints. This is the RNAV into Steamboat Springs, Colorado. At first glance, there are no big red flags screaming, I am a scary approach. The first thing that jumps out is the mountain line just on the east side of the field. Let's bring up the profile view. We see a straight downwards angling line representing the vertical path of the approach. It looks just like the straight lines you'd see on an ILS approach, but because the FAA doesn't draw these to scale, they're deceptive. And here's our tip off right there. The visual descent angle, the angle we need to fly to get from the step-down altitude of 8,740 at Wakor and the threshold crossing height is a whopping 7.75 degrees. Compare that with a standard 3-degree glide path, and this is a real slam dunk of a descent on final. This isn't the whole story, though. The positioning of the VDA symbol itself tells us something. It's placed between the step-down fix of Wakor and the runway, so it only applies to that segment. It doesn't apply to the full final approach segment beginning at the final approach fix at PEXA. The angle from PEXA to Wakor is different. Even though the angle as depicted on the line stays constant, we'll need to adjust our power and elevator control at Wakor. Approaches involve lateral guidance too, and this one has a big red flag in that dimension as well. The approach course shows a track of 353 degrees in the intermediate segment from Mabke to PEXA. At the final approach fix, PEXA, we'll need to make a course change to 323 degrees to get lined up with the runway. It's not often that we need to maneuver the aircraft right when we configure for final approach. Let's see what all this looks like from the cockpit. We're on the intermediate segment approaching the FAF at PEXA flying a 353 course. Passing PEXA, we configure for the approach and make a turn to course a 323. Now, on the final approach segment, we maintain a descent rate which will allow us to pass Wakor at or above the step-down altitude of 8,740. Passing that point, we have a brief but hectic final segment where we need to transition to a steep descent to make that 7 and 3 quarters degree angle. Notice the green meatball on the PFD showing that we're trending down to the runway threshold at this rate of drop. We've got power fully idle and full flaps and we're still struggling to keep our speed from creeping up too high. Hardly a stable approach. If we look closer at our instruments, we see another symptom of an unconventional approach. We're currently flying above 8,000 MSL. Our indicated airspeed is in the 80s, but at high altitude, our true airspeed is higher. With no wind like we have here, our ground speed is well over 90 knots, putting our little Cessna in a category B approach. Higher minimums will apply, and the higher ground speed will require an even steeper angle to maintain the desired glide path. High altitude approaches will therefore require steeper descents due to higher ground speeds. On this approach plate, we at least had the benefit of a published visual descent angle to tip us off to the steep approach, but we don't always have that luxury. Let's look at this approach, the RNAV into runway 2 at Brainerd. This time, there's no VDA published, and instead we have a note saying visual segment obstacles. What the designers are telling us is that there are obstructions on what would be the visual descent angle between the MDA and the runway threshold that would require us to destabilize our approach to clear. Because of this, a constant and stable descent angle can't be published down to the runway, even if it's just for advisory purposes. Even though the VDA isn't published on the FAA chart, the same approach on the Jeppesen plates shows that angle at about 3.5 degrees, not nearly as steep as we saw in Colorado, but steeper than a standard glide path and unless you have the JEP subscription, you don't have ready access to what that angle is. This approach also involves a course that isn't lined up with the runway center line, which can be seen on the airport diagram and the arrow indicating the approach course. One of the most subtle red flags on an RNAV approach is the presence or absence of a little shaded stipple on the profile view. Here at Laconia, the RNAV to runway 8, which includes vertical guidance to LPV minimums, has a little shaded shape at the very end of the approach path. It's like the pointy end of a larger glide slope feather you'd see on an ILS approach. It indicates that on the visual segment, from the decision altitude to the threshold crossing height, no obstacle penetrates an area with a slope of 34 to 1. 
a constant descent can be flown right down to the runway. On the RNAV to runway 1 at Franklin County, also an approach with LPV minimums and vertical guidance, there is no stipple. Obstacles do penetrate that 34 to 1 slope, and we can see an obstruction at 305 MSL right at the field. One of the larger threats on a non-precision instrument approach is a shorter than average runway. Here's the RNAV to runway 33 at Kingston. We can brief the destination runway as having a length of 3,100 feet by looking at the airport diagram or on a sectional. It's indicated that the available runway landing distance is only 2,630 feet, due in large part to a displaced threshold for runway 33. Here, we have vertical guidance thanks to the LPV, but with a glide path of 3.59 degrees, we're coming down rather quickly. We don't have a ton of runway to use to bleed off either. We may want to adjust our approach to come in fully configured at a slower airspeed to give ourselves room to transition onto the visual segment and get ready for a shorter landing. No two approaches are alike, despite their standard look and feel on an approach plate. There are subtle hints throughout the plate that can throw up a red flag, which you should hunt for in your pre-flight planning and approach briefing. Thanks for watching, and I hope this video serves you well in your IFR flying. If you're ready for full IFR ground school or a seasoned pilot looking for some extra training and proficiency, Head over to flight-insight.com to see our full courses.